Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below and there you will find a link to my Ravelry page where you can see all the patterns I have available as PDFs and maybe get one for yourself to knit. Also in the link below, you will find a, in the link below, in the description below, you will find a link to my Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group where we can share pictures. If you decide you want to make any of my shawls or the one I'm getting ready to teach you about, please come over and we can chat. It's a closed group, but I will approve you. Or you can always chat with me in the comments below because I love comments. So last week I uploaded a how to knit a crescent shape shawl video and you guys seem to really like it. So I love it when I get feedback and I want to try to, you know, give back to that feedback. So today I have another how to knit a specific shape shawl and this time it is, isn't it cute? I love these tiny shawls. This is an asymmetrically shaped shawl. It's not really a triangle. It's sort of a crescent. <laughs> it's just a fun shape. Um, this is the kind I like because it's deeper than some of these are. Some of them tend to be more long and scarf-like. The construction is that it begins at this point up here and then it grows and this is the bind off. Um, obviously you will probably make it a bit larger than this, but if you just want to learn how to do the shape, you can totally make a tiny one. I want to get right in on the instructions, but watch for after the instructions are done and I will be showing you some of my pieces that are in this shape. Let's get to knitting. First, we have to cast on. We're going to do a long tail cast on. You can substitute a cast on if you'd like, but you need something fairly stable. You need at least six inches for weaving in the year end, and then you just need a little bit because we're only casting on three stitches. First, you do your slip knot. You're gonna wrap your yarn around all the way until it crosses. Then you grab this bottom loop, pull it through, reach through, grab your yarn, and then pull. And that's how you make a slip knot. You stick your needle through the loop and then pull on the two legs to tighten it down. Duper easy. Now, this is my tail. So you know what? It needs to be coming off the other side. So I'm gonna flip this around and stick him through here. You want your yarn that is going to the ball to go over your index finger that's your working yarn, and then your tail to go over your thumb. You hold it slingshot style. You go under this bottom one that's on your thumb, wrap with the index finger, pull it through, under the one on your thumb, wrap with the index finger, pull it through, three, we're done. That's all the cast on. Now, this style shawl, has a set of, oh, look, gonna start knitting with that tail. Don't wanna do that. Make sure you've got your working yarn. This style of shawl has a setup that gets you where you need to go and then a repeat. So to start our setup, first thing we do is knit one, yarn over, keep that tail out of the way, knit two, one, two. There we go. We've increased by one, we're up to four. Flip it over. Now, for this row two, all we're gonna do is knit the first three stitches. One, two, three. Move our yarn to front, insert your needle as if to purl and slip that last stitch, which will create a nice selvage for us. Flip it over. Now, for row three, we're going to knit two, yarn over, knit two. Doopy doo. We have increased by one additional stitch. We're gonna flip it. Grab our needle, 
And for this wrong side row, we're also going to increase. So on row four, we're going to knit one, knit two, and then when we get to this yarn over right here, we're gonna knit front back. What that means is this is the front leg of your stitch. You're gonna knit through that front leg, but do not let it come off your left hand needle because you then need to work, knit through the back leg. And that is a knit front back. Then you let it come off and you've turned that one stitch into two stitches. Knit one, move yarn to front, and slip purl wise. I know it looks like a big old mess, but I promise it's gonna look good. That's row four. Now for row five, we're going to knit one, help if I actually went through the stitch, knit one, knit two, and then we're going to do the increase we're gonna use on the rest of the right side. It's knit one, don't let, the, don't let this come off, yarn over, knit one into that same stitch. So we have now increased by two. So we took that, yarn, that one stitch and turned it into three. Then we're going to knit one, and then this is what makes it curve. At the end of the row, we're going to decrease with a slip slip knit. So you insert your right hand needle as if to knit and slip it off. Insert your right hand needle as if to knit and slip it off. Then you take this left hand needle, insert it through the two front legs and knit those two together through the back loop. So we increased by two and then decreased by one. So our net increase is only one stitch. But because I want a nice curve, we are also going to start increasing on the wrong side. So row six is knit two, purl one, and then this is the yarn over from the previous row. It's the yarn over that was in the middle of that knit one, yarn over, knit one. And we're going to knit into the front leg and then knit into the back leg. So we did a knit front back, knit two, move yarn to front, slip that last stitch for our selvage. So that is all six rows of our setup. I know, I'm gonna move it down on the cable so you can see it. I know it does not look like much, but here is what it's gonna look like when you block it. You gotta have, you gotta start someplace. Now, the repeat for this is only four rows long. The setup is over. You never have to do that again unless you wanna knit the shawl again. So for our repeat, this is row one. We're going to knit two, and then we're going to knit front, yarn over, knit again, All right? So that's take, we've added two, and then we're going to knit to the last two stitches, however many stitches that takes, because as your rows get longer, you will need more stitches. And on this last two stitches, we are again going to insert as if to knit and slip, in turn at insert as if to knit and slip, and then insert through those two front legs, wrap your yarn, pull it through. So a slip slip knit. So we added two and took away one. But we want to continue to increase at a higher rate because I want a nice deep shawl. So we're also going to be increasing on the wrong side rows. So for that, we're going to knit two, purl to the last four stitches. So you purl until there are four stitches left on your left hand needle. So we got one more. And there it is, that yarn over from the knit one yarn over knit one from the front. We're going to knit front back into this stitch. So insert through the front leg, knit one. Insert through the back leg and knit it. And you've knit front back knit two, move the yarn to front, insert as if to purl, and slip that stitch so we have our neat selvage. So those were rows one and two of the repeat. It's just stuck in it. And here's rows three and four. 
we are going to knit one, knit two, just like on the previous row, then knit, yarn over, knit, into that one stitch, and now we're going to do a tiny little bit of seed stitch. So you are going to knit one, purl one, knit one, and you knit one, purl one to the last three stitches because you're going to then knit and again slip, slip, knit. There we go. So I'm going to say again, it's knit one, purl one to the last three stitches, and then you end knit one, slip, slip, knit. On the wrong side, we are going to knit two, and then purl one, knit one to the last five stitches. Purl one, knit one, purl one. Oop, that purl doesn't want to happen. Knit one. How many stitches we got? One, two, three, four, five. So then your last stitch before your increase is a purl one. And then here we are. We're at the fourth stitch from the end. We're going to knit through the front and knit through the back. Oop, maybe not. Yep. Knit through the back. And then knit two and move the yarn to front, slip with yarn in front, and there you go. That's it. That is the entire pattern, the setup, and then you work those four rows over and over and over again. Um, I'm going to do it one more time for you since there's so few stitches, just to make sure you've got it. So, row one is knit two, knit, yarn over, knit, and then we're going to knit to the last two stitches. This is the stockinette stripe. <sighs> Boogers. This ball yarn really wants to be in the limelight. Then you slip slip, knit, okay, then we knit two and purl to the last four stitches. I mean, I got one, two, three, there's five. I got one more purl coming. And then this fourth stitch, we're going to knit through the front leg and knit through the back leg, knit two, slip one with yarn in front. That's rows one and two. It's the stockinette stripe. And then we're going to do a stripe of seed stitch. Knit two, knit, yarn over, knit, then knit one, purl one to the last three stitches. One. That noise is the cable on my table. Ha ha ha, that rhymed. Last three stitches, so knit, slip, slip, knit. There we go. And row four, knit two, and then purl one, knit one to the last. Ah, five stitches. Knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl one. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. So I have to knit one, purl one, and that's that fourth stitch from the end. We're going to knit front back into it. Knit two, slip one with yarn in front. There we go, that is the very beginning of the tiny shawl. And the fun thing is, this is the shape that it will come out. If you want to see, here it is. There you go. See, you get this, this is our selvage edge where we're doing the knit yarn over knits and the knit front backs. And this is the edge with all the slip slip knits. So what happens is as you're increasing here, you're decreasing here, and that's what gives you this curve. It keeps on going, and then you block this. This is your bind off. What you do is you just repeat those four rows until you have a shawl the size you want, leave enough yarn to bind off, and then bind off along here. You want to use, I used the, uh, expandable lace bind off you can knit whatever stretchy bind off you want I'll link to the one that I use and that is your bind off so beginning gets bigger and bigger increasing here decreasing here bind off isn't he cute I hope that all made sense. Um, I did it twice because it was only four rows, but there's a little bit of fiddliness. And as I told you, I was going to show you some pieces that I have designed in this shape. And I thought you might want to see them larger. So one is Love Child is in this asymmetric shape. Um, it The cast on is over here. And then this big long thing down here is the bind off. So you can see how big this is and how the shape, see how the points off center, that's why it's called asymmetrical. And, but it has a lot of coverage like a rectangle shawl, but it also the curved neckline makes it stay on nicely, just like a crescent shape shawl. So it's kind of a crescent triangle hybrid. Another one that is in this shape is Earthbound Misfit and it's enormous. So if you have a whole bunch of yarn and you keep on going, it can be this big. How crazy is that? Now, both of these have slightly different increases that I used because I wanted a different edge treatment, but they both have the same shaping, which is increasing by three on the top side and decreasing by one on the bottom side every two rows. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.